track for the first Breeders' Cup race of the day. A packed house, as you see, in shirt sleeves with the 85 degree temperatures. Number one is Mr. Brooks, who has trained in England, winner in France, his last start, ridden by maybe the greatest jockey of all time, Lester Piggott. He'll be 57 years old next month. It's no surprise that Mr. Brooks beats the opposition like a drum. Trainer Richard Hannon was formerly the drummer in the rock group, The Trogs, you know, wild thing. Sired by Blazing Saddles, Mr. Brooks was named for that movie star, Mel Brooks. Number two, Senior Speedy, becoming a fixture in the sprint. This is his third time around. He was ninth in 1990, swerving to avoid another horse. He finished fourth last year. Number three, Mia Farah, the only filly in the race and a speedy one. She's never been headed in the first half mile this year. Trained by former jockey Leslie Aaron, she's the likely pace setter. Number four, Sheikh Albadou. After pulling a 26-to-1 shocker to capture the sprint last year, Sheikh Albadou would be the first repeat winner. He had four races in England this year before a good second to Rubiano in Belmont's Bossburg Stakes. He retires to stud in Kentucky tomorrow. Number five is 30 Slews. Trainer Bob Baffert made the move from quarter horses to thoroughbreds four years ago, and this gelding is owned by a slew of quarter horse men, seven of them. After solving a breathing problem, this colt has taken two in a row. Number six is furiously partly owned by Treasury Secretary Nicholas Brady and trained by Suge McGahee, who won the sprint with Dancing Spree the last time it was held here at Gulfstream. This year, McGahee went till September without taking a major stakes race, but lately has been winning everything in sight. Number seven, Rubiano, owned by a large group of small investors and trained by new Hall of Famer Scotty Schulhofer. Rubiano has won five of six this year and might be Sprint Division champion regardless of today's outcome. He had a tremendous close to beat Sheikh Albadou in the Vosburg. He could make Julie Crone the first female jockey to win a Breeders' Cup race. Number eight, King Corey, running outside Canada for only the second time in his career, trained by 32-year-old Sherry Noakes, who just took out her trainer's license this year. Number nine is Salt Lake. Trainer D. Wayne Lucas, the all-time leading Breeders' Cup winner with 10 victories, including Gulch in the 88 sprint. He's also closing in on a 10th straight national training title. Salt Lake third to Rubiana and Sheikh Albadou in the Vosburgh Stakes. Number 10 is Super Strike. Super Strike, a three-year-old, was bred and started training in Britain. He's calm and easygoing, much like the quarter horses Bruce Jackson used to train. Small like a quarter horse, too. He won his last start in California on the bleeder medication Lasix. Lasix is also legal here in the state of Florida, and Super Strike will have that medication today. Number 11 is Gray Sloopy, owned by retired TV producer Ed Friendly, who created such popular shows as Laugh-In and Little House on the Prairie. Jockey Kent DeSormo has never won a Breeders' Cup race, but he does lead the nation in earnings this year. Then three horses in the mutual field. Number 12 is LBO, English trained and the only horse Brian Brackpool has ever owned. He was third to Mr. Brooks in France in his last start. Number 13 is Arrowtown, impressive winner of the skip trial stakes at the Meadowlands in his most recent start, but beaten by Rubiano in their only two meetings this year. Lafitte Pinkai, America's winningest active jockey, he has over 7,000 wins. And number 14 is Card Mania. He's been a high-class stakes winner on both sides of the Atlantic, but his best form was earlier in the year. Chris McCarran looks for his fourth Breeders' Cup win. And Chris's brother, Greg McCarran, who is a, a fine jockey in his own right. Moving into his outside post position. He's a little bit fractious in behind the gates. Kent DeSarmo aboard. Waiting for Ray Sloopy. We're ready for a start in the 92 Breeders' Cup. And they're off. And Rubiano came out like a rocket. And Mia Farah is also right there with 30 slews in between those two. But it's the Philly Mia Farah who takes the lead. 30 slews is now running second. Arrowtown toward the inside third. Cardmania fourth. Sheik Albadu is fifth. LBO sixth toward the inside. Super Strike is seventh on the outside. He's about seven lengths from the lead. Grace Loopy is running eighth. Mr. Brooks is down on the inside. He's ninth. Furiously is tenth, and he's in behind horses. Rubiano is eleventh, but he's clear of trouble on the outside. Salt Lake is twelfth. Canadian King Corey is thirteenth. And the late running Senior Speedy trails the field. A dazzling opening quarter here of 21 and 3. And the Philly Mia Farah flaunting her speed as they come to the top of the stretch. She leads by two. Elvio is putting in a run toward the inside. 30 slows is set down for the drive. Sheikh Albadu is coming with his run down the center of the racetrack. Then Super Strike. Rubiano's eight links from the lead. And it's Mia Farah leading the way with the 16th to come. 30 slows her only challenger. Mia Farah's home. 30 slows surges to victory. It's 30 slows who wins by an act. Mia Farah is again second and run.
stretch to get the victory in a sparkling time. All right, Tom Durkin, Mia Farah, the early pace setter, caught at the wire by 30 slews, but the race marred by a horse down. That was Mr. Brooks. Mr. Brooks down on the track. That's midway in the turn for home and immediately being tended to by the veterinarians on call here at Gulfstream Park. Lester Piggott, who will be 57 years old, next year was riding Mr. Brooks. You see the horse down on the track. This race, which will go in the books as the fastest Breeders' Cup sprint ever marred by an accident involving Mr. Brooks. You see that special equine ambulance coming alongside Mr. Brooks. One of the precautions and one of the newer developments since the tragedy that affected Go for One at the Breeders' Cup in 1990. Lester Piggott still on the track. Lester Piggott, many consider him the greatest jockey in the history of thoroughbred racing. And the crowd, which was thrilled with the finish of the race, suddenly shocked back to reality when they realized that horse and rider are down. Midway through that turn, Lester Piggott being tended to by the paramedics. Mr. Brooks by the veterinarians. We'll take a look now at the replay and see if we can determine exactly what happened to Mr. Brooks. Mr. Brooks, saddle cloth number one on the inside rail. Lester Piggott aboard, Mr. Brooks, he's number one, closest to the rail as you see. Look at Piggott looking behind him as if something happened to the horse. And suddenly the horse, after perhaps snapping a leg, right front. his right front leg goes down and Lester Piggott falling hard. And I think that Lester Piggott was looking behind him to make sure there was not another horse that would fall over him. In his moment of distress, Lester Piggott was thinking about other horses and riders. There's no doubt about that, Tom. He felt it coming. You could see him hesitate as he tried to ease the horse back. He looked, looked over his left-hand shoulder to make sure he was clear and wasn't going to be uh, run over by another horse or make another horse fall over the top of him. He felt it come. He tried to slow down. He tried to keep the horse up as much as he could. Unfortunately, the horse broke his right front, and uh, there was no way that the horse could stay on uh, his three feet running at that speed. And uh, it looked like the horse kind of rolled over Pickett as they fell together. England's Lester Pickett being loaded into the ambulance, scheduled to ride later in the day. But his Breeders' Cup Day 1992 coming to a tragic end for Mr. Brooks. And we await word now on the injuries suffered by the great Lester Piggott. Standard procedure to immobilize a rider who has been injured in that way. And they'll load him into the ambulance. Veterinarians, meanwhile, I assume John Veach will humanely destroy Mr. Brooks. It's a routine procedure to prevent the horse from suffering. Yes, uh, the, the injury seemed to be uh, a very grievous, and in that sort of situation, there is nothing to do but humanely destroy the animal. It did seem that at Pickett, when they put him in the ambulance, they had put a neck brace on him for precaution, and they will rush him across the street to the nearest hospital, which is the Humana Hospital, for uh, as quick and immediate uh, medical care as he seems to need. So as the horses for the next race make their way over, Lester Piggott taken from the track in an ambulance to be rushed to the emergency room. So a brilliant opening race marred by a spill. Mr. Brooks humanely destroyed after snapping his right foreleg. The injuries to Lester Piggott still to be determined. We're ready. Let's go down to Jenny Ornstein with one of the attending veterinarians. All right, Jenny, a brilliant first race marred by the spill. Mr. Brooks and Lester Piggott will have more on the condition of Lester Piggott when we return after these messages and a word from your local station. In the gate. 
for the Breeders' Cup Sprint, and they're off. 30 Sleuth breaks alertly on the outside. Mia Farah and Demolute Demishoot. Gilded time, flashing speed from the inside. Up the back stretch, and it's the Philly. Mia Farah leading the way. Demolute Demishoot all out, trying to stick with her early. Then toward the inside, Gilded Time is running third. LED is up close, running in fourth position. On the outside, 30 Sleuths is fifth. Surprise offers six toward the inside. The Canadian filly, Apili, is running in seventh. The French winner, Mon Bleu, is eighth on the far outside. Sayadati is ninth. Cardmania was up close earlier, but he's dropped back to tenth. Fly So Free is eleventh. Bird on the wire, the favorite is better than 12 links from the lead with less than three furlongs to run. Then now listen, and Music Merci is the trailer. And the Philly flaunts her speed. The opening quarter, one in 21 seconds as the field turns for home. Gilded time takes a run at Mia Farah. Demolute Demishit hanging tough toward the inside. On the outside, 30 slows is right there. Card Mania is closing, and Moon Blue, but it's still the Philly holding on. Mia Farah is still there. Finish card mania flashing his early speed. It looked like he got it from my angle. The Philly Mia Farah did what she did last year, getting there all the way in the early going, but getting weak at the end. A photo finish to open the day. They're in the gate, and they're off. Chimes band breaks alertly, and sweep broke poorly. Soviet problem is coming on through in between horses. Toward the inside, Honor the Heroes right there. Lock Song off a beat slowly for her. Meritocrat is in and among horses along with King Ruckus. Chimes Band is running sixth at E6 wide. Toward the inside, exclusive Praline moving into seventh. Prenup is now eighth. Cherokee run, ninth on the outside, but it's a tight pack. He's only four lengths from the lead. American Chance is moving through in between horses. Then the late starting end sweep. Cardmania, last year's winner, is laboring near the back of the pack. Then Harlan, and far behind the rest, lumbering along, is stretch running Bird on the wire. A sensational opening quarter of 21 and one-fifth seconds, and the pace is very spirited indeed, as Soviet Problem now is going head-to-head -head with Honor the Hero as the field now turns for home. Cherokee run to the attack at the top of the stretch, and here he comes with a bold sweep after the leaders. Cherokee run and Soviet Problem head-to-head -head with a furlong to determine the best. Lock Song is out of it. Cardmania putting in his late run, so is Harlan is there. Problem on the line, and there was a three way photo for third. Cherokee run, and jockey Mike Smith never had him too far off the lead. He collared Soviet problem and dueled to victory in a hard fought 109 and 2.